In this video, we'll talk a bit about modeling using systems differential equations and how you go about the process and what this looks like for trying to analyze and solve problems. So the ideas for modeling for systems come back to all the same principles we had for modeling with first order equations. Because we're still in general doing first order things, we just don't have a first order system and not a first order equation. And the main thing I'm talking about here is the accumulation equation. The idea that for a given quantity, its rate of change should equal the combination of the incoming rates, or the rate in, minus the outgoing rates, or the rate out. The only difference here is now we're dealing with the system. We have multiple equations and multiple things that are changing, as opposed to for an equation we only had one thing. So the rates of changes in incoming and outgoing rates can not only depend on the thing you're looking at and t, but also the value of the other functions, the other components that are also working here, and they can all come together to write this system. A lot of the same types of problems we solved before for first order equations can be extended systems, and the main example of that is multiple tank problems. So the process here is identical to what it is for a single tank. There are just now multiple tanks involved, the outputs from one tank can influence the inputs of the other and vice versa. So as sort of a generic sketch, if I have two tanks, I might have an external flow into this tank. I might have a pipe that connects this tank into this one. And this one either could just flow out or I could have an outflow that also loops back into tank one. Right? All of these are options for this system. And the point is this pink stream is both an outflow from tank one and an inflow to tank two. Now the concentration in that stream or the amount of whatever you're measuring in that stream depends on the amount that's in tank one. This means that I'm gonna get a term from this stream involving the salt or whatever precipitate amount in tank one is gonna show up in the tank two equation. And that gives rise to this being a system that's going on here and not just a single equation. Because multiple things are changing and they're interacting as they go. So for an example of this, let's set up this problem here and then we will look for equal solutions and see what we can classify about them. So I have two tanks to start with 200 gallons of water. Tank A contains 10 pounds of salt. Tank B starts with 30. Both tanks are well mixed. So well mixed means we're gonna get the right sort of properties for the outflows. Water flows into tank A at a rate of two gallons per minute, salt concentration 0.5. All flows from A into B at four gallons per minute. And there's two exit streams from B, one at two gallons per minute and that goes back to A, one at two gallons per minute leaves the system. Okay, let's draw our picture here. It's like the one we had on the previous page. We have two tanks. We'll call this one A and this one B. Now, if I look at V, A, and X, A being the amount of salt in the tank and the volume of the tank respectively, this is salt and this is volume. I have the same thing for B. I can set up the equations. So in orange, we'll have the inflow stream to A. So that it reads from right here into tank A at a rate two gallons per minute, salt concentration of 0.5 gallons per minute. So I can write that on this line here. There's a flow from A into B at a rate of four gallons per minute. So A come out into B. This is four gallons per minute. And I know the concentration is going to be XA divided by VA because it's always the amount of salt in the tank divided by the volume. That's how the well-mixed tanks always work. There's two exit streams from B. One, two gallons per minute that flows back into A. So this here is at two gallons per minute and its concentration will be XB divided by VB because it's based on the stuff that is in tank B that it's flowing away from. And then one at two gallons per minute that leaves the system with the same concentration. Okay, we're gonna set up a system that models this. So let's look at volumes first. So volumes we see we have two in, two in to A and four out of A. So the volume of A is constant and the same goes for B. Four in, two out, two out. So both volumes are constant, which is great. And they're at 200 gallons because that's what the problem said they both started at. Now, to actually write this equation, we wanna look at how do these different amounts of salt change in time. If we look at XA first, 
we'll have that dxa dt should be the inflow. So that's two gallons per minute times 0.5 pound per gallon, plus the purple inflow coming from tank B, two gallons per minute at XB over 200 gallons, because that volume is constant at 200, and then minus the outflow in pink, which is four gallons per minute times XA over 200 gallons. I have taken the three streams that are going into and out of this tank and used that to give me an equation that says how XA is changing. It depends on XB, so I can't solve this on its own, but it's an equation for it. I can do the same exact thing for tank B and get this equation. Again, we have the pink stream, which is now an inflow into tank B, and then the purple and the green that both flow out of tank B. We can now simplify these equations a little bit. We will get the dxa dt, 2 times 0.5 is 1, is all in pounds per minute, plus xb over 100 minus xa over 50, simplifying out these two terms here, and dxb dt equals xa over 50 minus xb over 50, because I will have 2 plus 2 gets me 4 of these, which is xb over 50. And there is my system for this problem. It has initial condition given by xa of 0 equals 10, and xb of 0 equals 30, because we're given at the first line of the problem statement. Now, let's try to find equilibrium solutions and classify them to see what this looks like. So for that, I want these to both be 0. This equation here tells us that xa must equal xb based on that set, since it must be 0. Plugging this into the top equation here means these two will then simplify to be a negative xa over 100. Tells me that 1 minus xa over 100 equals 0. So xa and xb are both 100. If I look now at the Jacobian matrix for this, this equation is almost linear. It has a little shift in it. It's in fact a non-homogeneous linear system. I can see that at that point, the Jacobian is going to be negative 1 over 50, 1 over 100, 1 over 50, negative 1 over 50. And then I can look to find the eigenvalues here to see what's going to happen. If I do so, I will get something that looks like lambda squared plus 1 over 25 lambda plus 1 over 50 times 50 minus 1 over 100 times 50 results in lambda squared plus 1 over 25 lambda plus 1 over 100 times 50. And if I work out the drag formula here, I would get that lambda should be negative 1 over 25 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 25 squared minus 1 over 25 times 50 because the 4 will cancel this 100 to make it a 25 over 2. This part here is positive under the square root because the second term is less, which means these will be real distinct negative roots. So it's a nodal sink. In particular, it's asymptotically stable. So what that tells us about the system is that over time, the solution will tend towards this solution. It'll tend towards the fact that both tanks will end up with 100 pounds of salt in them. If we think back to what we had for first order equations and modeling tanks in that sense, this also makes sense because the inflow has a concentration of 0.5 pounds per gallon. It gets well mixed with the entire system. And since the final volume is going to be 200 no matter what, the resulting amount of salt in each tank should end up being 100 over time because that's what they will sort of converge to as you keep pushing this flow through the system. That's the idea of using system differential equations to do a modeling problem for multiple tanks as well as how you would set them up and how you would analyze the resulting equilibrium solutions once you write the equation out for these types of systems.